a perfect droplet falling in a liquid. Most of us recognize this as the campaign for Nespresso with the slogan, what else? But the real question is, why does the droplet bounce on the liquid and not directly coalesce? Research on the dynamics of water droplets interacting with the liquid has multiple possible applications. For instance, in atmospheric and oceanographic sciences, where they investigate rain formation and the interaction of rain droplets on the ocean surface. Another practical use is in agriculture, where the effect of liquid droplets on a liquid surface can determine the efficient quantity of pesticides used per unit area. Lastly, and maybe most importantly, this effect has a direct application to forensic science, where the interaction of liquid droplets on different surfaces can give a more accurate idea of where a murder has taken place. The only question now is, why and how does a water droplet bounce when falling in a liquid? Let's take a look at the droplet again, this time from the side. As a water droplet falls and hits the surface of the liquid, a small cushion of air gets trapped between the water droplet and the surface. While the droplet loses kinetic energy, it forms a crater in the liquid. There is now a larger water-air interface. Because water molecules prefer to be surrounded by similar molecules, they would like to minimize the surface area of the interface. Thus, increasing the surface area increases the free energy. This phenomenon is called surface tension. The reaction of the liquid is comparable to a trampoline, as the liquid launches the water droplet back up into the air, creating the bounce that we observe in the film. Let's take a look at the crater that is formed when the water droplet hits the surface of the water with some back-of-the-envelope calculations. The container has a width of 7 centimeters. So from the scale, we can see that the crater has a depth of 0.9 centimeters. In order to determine the depth of the crater, consider a droplet of water at a height h and radius r. The crater has a radius x, which we will determine. To do this, we first look at the potential energy, which is equal to the surface tension energy plus the energy of the crown that is formed. We will be neglecting the energy of the crown. So keep in mind that the value of the crater radius that we obtain will be larger than it actually is. Take the potential energy as the mass of a sphere multiplied by gravity and the height. This equals the surface tension energy, which is the surface tension times the area of the crater. We approximate the crater as half a sphere. From these, we can derive an expression for the height of the crater. Filling in all the values applicable to the water droplet, we get a height of the crater of 1.35 centimeters, which is slightly larger than the observed value, as we expected. So now that we understand the dynamics of a falling water droplet in a liquid, let's enjoy the beauty of it one last time. 